I always feel visitors worry that Singapore is too expensive. To help overcome this, I'm going to share with you in this video some money saving tips, including a stack of things that visitors can do for free in Singapore. My first tip then is to avoid the white and black premium taxis, especially at Changi Airport, Orchard Road or in the CBD. At a taxi queue and especially at the airport, you will be guided to the first taxi available. If this taxi is black or white, do not get into it. This is a premium taxi and it costs more. You are allowed to not get in the first taxi in the queue if it is a premium taxi. And while it might be a slightly longer wait for a regular one, it can save you as much as 30% of the fare. Most premium taxis do not offer significantly more space than a regular taxi either. I'm six foot tall and have never had a problem getting a regular taxi, even when I'm traveling with a partner or with luggage. If you're traveling as a family, there are family taxis available that come in black and white to indicate the higher fare, but I feel these can be worth it due to the extra space. Also be careful when booking a taxi with the CDG app. I've had premium taxis automatically assigned to me, even though I didn't request one. You can cancel the booking and search again if this happens to you. So for tip number one, I estimate this as a saving of $10 by taking a regular taxi from the airport to your hotel. My second tip is to double down on the money saving strategies when coming into town from the airport and to take the train instead. Singapore's train network is extensive. It covers most of the city and stations are located close to many hotels, particularly in the downtown and orchard areas. It's also very cheap. Fares are charged based on the distance traveled and start at just under $1 and the maximum fare you'll pay is $2.26. Most rides from the airport will come in at just under $2. Easiest way to get a ticket is actually to use your own credit or debit card. As long as it's Visa or MasterCard, it should work on the Singapore Public Transport Network. There is a 60 cent per day charge for every day that you use a foreign credit card, but if you're staying less than a week, this will end up cheaper than the non-refundable deposit for the prepaid EasyLink card. That can save you over $30 when compared to a taxi. Taking the train is convenient if you're staying around Tanjong Paga, the CBD or Orchard areas. You can also take a train to somewhere like Pai Labor and then switch to a taxi for the remainder of your journey. This avoids the airport and downtown surcharges by doing this. If you're going to a hotel around Suntec or Marine Parade, also consider taking the bus as an alternative. Bus 36 will take you down the expressway from the airport to these locations. It costs about the same as taking the train, but for Suntec and Marine Parade in particular, it can be more convenient. Tip number three is to buy your SIM card in town. SIM cards sold at the airport typically cost around $30 to $50 and you're mostly limited to the two big networks, Singtel and Starhub. Cheaper options suitable for short-term visitors are available once you leave the airport. As an aside, both the providers do advertise a $12 or $15 SIM card for tourists arriving at the airport, but I've often found that these are sold out and you end up having to buy the more expensive $30 one. Most visitors, especially if you're staying here for under a week, do not need to spend $30 on a SIM card. One of the cheaper options I like to recommend is Simba. So this costs $10 and includes 100 gigabytes of data and can be purchased from small shops and convenience stores island wide. By going with Simba, you might lose some of the IDD roaming and customer service features. Not that I've had a great experience with Singtel customer service, but most tourists won't use these things anyway. If you do need IDD or roaming and you're visiting neighboring countries, Simba also has a $20 SIM card that includes these things. That's still cheaper than the $30 SIM card sold by Starhub or Singtel at the airport. Adding this to our tally, I'm going to call it $10 in savings because it's only fair to compare apples with apples. My fourth tip then is to share with you where it's more economical to walk than to take a taxi or catch the train. So commonly when tourists are moving around, they feel the urge to take a taxi or train to escape the heat or because they think it's more convenient. However, in these areas, I recommend walking instead. So these are Beach Road and Bugis to Suntec, up and down Orchard Road and in and around the CBD and Chinatown areas. So around these areas, I've often found it's cheaper to walk than to take a taxi or a train. And particularly if you're staying in one of the hotels here, don't be afraid to walk around. There are covered walkways available and often you can duck through a building to get a blast of air conditioning and cool yourself down. While you might think a taxi can offer you that little bit of relief from the heat, it can cost you nearly $10 just to make a short trip. I've also found that short taxi journeys can be slow in Singapore due to the abundance of traffic light. And even though the MRT only costs $1 for a journey, I still find it a better option to walk. You can spend a long time walking all the way down to the MRT and then all the way back up again to get out. I'm going to count this on the tally at $9 as that's what I spent once traveling from Suntec to Beach Road. If you've been following along so far, you would have saved over $40. So hit that like button if you found this valuable. It lets me know the best ways I can make videos to help you out when you visit Singapore. Tip number five then is to avoid visiting Singapore during Formula One week. Singapore goes crazy for the Formula One. It draws in tourists from around the world to watch the race and enjoy the big name acts that come and perform. All this demand for visitor accommodation pushes the prices up and makes it a really expensive time to visit if you're not here for the Formula One. Because if you are here, there's nothing much you can do about the high prices. It also makes it more difficult to get taxis as well as bookings at popular restaurants. A Singapore race is usually held in the middle of September and the spectacle lasts about a week. So avoid this time and you can save hundreds of dollars on hotels in particular. A hotel that typically costs less than $300 per night, such as the Park Royal on Beach Road, 
can cost over $700 on the race weekend. My sixth tip is a bit smaller in scale, but it's one that I live by whenever I'm in Singapore, and that's to drink local coffee. Local coffee, also called copy, is a tasty and affordable way to get your caffeine fix. Typically costs under $2 for a cup. Compared to a Starbucks, this is a saving of around $4 per cup. My favorite order is iced coffee si kosong, which means iced coffee with evaporated milk and no sugar. If you want to drink it like a local, try ordering kopi siul dai. This means hot coffee, less sweet. I often find that the default coffee is too sweet. Personally, I have two cups of coffee per day, so I'm counting this as $8 in savings. My seventh tip is to eat outdoors. Singapore is a foodie heaven. There are great food options across a huge range of price points, from a $2 plate of noodles all the way up to a $500 Michelin star degustation menu. But my money saving tip here is that you can get tasty food for much cheaper by eating at the many outdoor coffee shops and hawker centers dotted around the city. These outdoor eateries are the traditional way Singaporeans enjoyed their cuisine, and you can even still get Michelin star dishes outdoors. Take the iconic chili crab as an example. At an outdoor eatery, this typically costs around $50 to $70 per person, while at an indoor air conditioned restaurant, it can easily cost over $100. For our tally, I'm going to call this a saving of $40. My next tip then is to take advantage of all the things that you can do for free. This includes getting a selfie with the Merlion, so you can be found on the edge of the scenic Marina Bay and is best accessed using the underpass from the Fullerton building. There is no charge for taking a photo with the Merlion. Gardens by the Bay, most of the iconic gardens are free to visit. You can even get up close and personal with a super tree without spending a cent. If you do want to pay for an attraction here, check out the Flower Dome. It's indoors and air conditioned. And also check out the Buddha Tooth Relic Temple, the Sri Mariman Temple, and the Masid Sultan. These are all free to visit and explore, though dress codes do apply. There are also plenty of free nature spots in Singapore. For something convenient and close to town, check out Fort Canning Park and its centuries-old fortifications still in place, as well as this iconic Instagram spot that people queue for. The UNESCO World Heritage listed Botanic Gardens are also nearly all free for visitors. When you're traveling to or from Changi Airport, it's also worth it to pay a visit to the famous waterfall at Jewel. 40 meter high indoor waterfall is completely free to visit and take a selfie with. I recommend climbing up the Canopy Park area to get the best views of the waterfall and indoor forest. Now, given all of these were free, our tally stands at nearly $500 if you're following my tips. It's easy to make costly mistakes in Singapore that can wipe out these savings. So check out this video next for common mistakes that visitors make that are easy to avoid.